there's so many different brands of acrylic paint to choose from. It can be very confusing understanding the differences or are they all created the same? I've been using the DecoArt Traditions Artist Acrylics for the past 11 years. I'd like to share with you some of the attributes and benefits I have found using those paints. If you have any questions about the paints, you can email me at suepruitt at artapprenticeonline.com, which is also our website where we have over 100 online classes using traditions. I hope you'll join us. Thank you. If you're not familiar with the DecoArt Traditions Artist Acrylics, I'd like to point out some of the benefits of using these paints. You can work with a limited palette. We don't need a lot of paint. We just need some basic colors. We've got three blues, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, cobalt blue hue, some yellows, Hansi yellow light, Hansi yellow medium, Hansi yellow and yellow oxide. A couple reds, naphthal red, naphthal red light, a couple oranges, vermilion and perinone. A couple true greens, phthalo green blue, phthalo green yellow. We've got your earth colors up here for toners. We've got three different grays, a value six, eight, and three. And we've got a couple different greens. These are not pure mix, but pigments, they're mixes. And we've got sap green, pine green, medium green. And we've got some of the favorites like quinacridone gold, brown matter, doxine purple. We also have some transparent pigments which are excellent for enhancing the color, the intensity, and bringing things to life. If you just need a little bit more on top of a, a area that you've painted, I would definitely go for these transparent pigments that you can glaze with. You don't even have to have all of these colors, and I don't have them all out. There's 49 colors. You can just pick your favorite blue, yellow, red, white, black, some earth colors, grays if you want, although you can make that with black and white. But you can make just about any color just with a very limited palette. On the label, you'll find some interesting and important information on each bottle. For instance, this ultramarine blue is a PB29, which means pigment blue 29. Now the 29 is, is an index number, it's how they file colors and pigments. Also tells you that this is a semi-transparent. Its light fastness is number one. Now light fastness is also very important to know in your paint because if you have the light fast number one, your paint will not fade. The hue and the tint, the value, Value is very important. This tells me it's a 2.1. And why do we need to know value, like what, what value this is? Well, if you're looking at a value scale, that just tells me this is a dark color in between. It's a 2.1, so it's in between a, a 2 and a 3 down here. So it tells me it's a dark color. Now this Hansi Yellow Light, it is a 8.3 and that tells us it's a very light color up here. So right off, it just lets you know the value. Also what's listed on the label is the chroma and saturation. Now that tells us what intensity the color is. And I'm gonna talk to you about a pigment wheel in just a second, which goes into intensity and hue. Another benefit of the paint is you never have to shake it. It's a new generation acrylic. It will not separate. It's got a special binder in it that keeps the paint molecules together. Never have to shake it. It will not get old inside this bottle. It's got an excellent shelf life. You just squeeze it and go. The paint is very creamy. Now I've laid this out on the palette over an hour ago and you can see that my paint is still workable. You can also put it on a, a wet paper towel to keep it moist longer if you're going to paint all day. Now this all depends on your temperature where you live, of course. How long it will stay moist on your palette. If you want to keep your mixed paints for a period of time, you can put them in the 
it's called a wet palette container and you, I've had them in here for several months in my refrigerator and they're just as creamy as they were when I put them in there. Now you do have to make sure that this paper towel stays wet. One of the questions I get asked often is why the paints are different prices. The top three are earth colors. It's one of the cheapest pigments to buy and to make. So those run around $4. And the ultramarine blue, naphthol red, Hansi yellow for instance, these are all separate pigments. When the manufacturer is buying pigments, depending on the pigment, it changes the, the price, can go up significantly. There's four mediums in the line of traditions. We've got extender and blending medium, multi-surface sealer, satin varnish, and glazing medium. Extender medium is used to extend the open time of the paint to enable the artist to blend colors together. It can also be used for antiquing and a variety of other techniques. We've got the multi-purpose sealer that can be used on wood, it can be used on glass, also uh, tin, metal, and it does say on the back some of the uses for these. We've got the satin varnish and some glazing medium. This is the Traditions Pigment Wheel. If you've never seen a pigment wheel before, this is a very interesting chart. All artists should be familiar with this. It tells, it has all of the Decorat Traditions colors on here, the pure pigments. Notice the different rings around the circle here. The outer ring is the, the most intense colors set on that outer ring. And as you go towards the center, colors get less chroma, less saturated, less intense as they move towards the center. And what we have in the center is your black, your white, and all the grays of your value scale. Let's look at the bottle of naphthol red. It tells us on here that it's a chroma saturation of 14.2. Now here we are right here. That color sits just off of the outer ring at a 14.2. This also on here tells us what value it is. It's a 4.2, which confers with what it says on the label. So this is another quick guide that you can use to find how intense that color is, what value it is. It's all here in one chart. Another use for this chart is to see temperature laid out right in front of you. Now, over here, these are obviously warm colors. Over here, you can see the yellows and oranges and so forth. And we have one orange that sits way out here on the, it's a chroma 15. That is actually our most intense color out here. Then you come down to the yellows. You can see this variety of uh, pure pigment yellows. And this Derlite yellow is the warmest yellow. And as we go down towards the blue, the colors get a little cooler. You can, if I wanted to pick a, a cool yellow instead of a warm yellow, I would go with this Hansi Yellow Light, which is the closest yellow to the green. Same thing with the blues. We've got all these different blues here. And as we come over here towards blues towards the yellow, these are the warmer blues like phthalo blue green is a warm blue in relation to like phthalo blue. Another benefit of this pigment wheel, let's go back to this Hansi Yellow Light. If I was looking for an earth color to tone this color, you know, colors are too intense, maybe I just don't want to use it straight out of the bottle. I don't want to change the color. I want it to stay this nice yellow. I can come in towards the center and we've got yellow oxide here, and I can go even further to raw umber. So raw, this shows me raw umber is yellows, one of yellows, earth colors. We also have raw sienna over here we can use if you want to tone it. It's going to make it a little warmer, as you can see, because it is closer to the warmer yellows. Now let's look at mixing color. If you want to keep a color intense, and you want to make a violet or a burgundy. What you want to do is mix two colors that are closest to each other on the outer area of the pigment wheel. 
for instance, if I mix naphtha red, go down here to the blue, because red and blue make a burgundy, you would mix naphtha red plus ultramarine blue together. You can see they sit towards the outside ring of the pigment wheel, meaning these would be more intense. Now look what happens if I mix naphtha red light and ultramarine blue together. It's still gonna make a burgundy. It's not gonna be as intense of a burgundy. So maybe you want less chroma saturation in the burgundy. Then I would come over to this naphtha red light, mix it with burgundy. And now look at this line. See how much closer this line is to towards the center of the wheel. The other line, let's look at that again. Look at how much further this line is towards the outside. And what would happen if we mix ultramarine blue and orange together? We go right through the center of the wheel. These are complementary colors. They can tone each other. It just depends how much you use of each. You know, if you use too much, you'll just get brown. <laughs> and if you want to make brown and you don't have burnt umber, this is how you can do that. Make a brown that goes with the rest of your palette. I hope this has helped you to understand some of the benefits of using traditions, and we hope you'll give it a try. Thank you for joining me.